Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news and notes mashup video starting with Andy Ruiz Jr. So he has announced that he has a fight date coming soon. Hashtag Team Destroyer posting this to his social media. So the question is, who's it going to be? I think there's a number of names within the PBC stable you could think of. Some people might think, okay, well, could it be Deontay Wilder? I think it's probably too soon for Wilder to be coming back, but I do expect that fight with him and Ruiz to happen at some point in the next year or so. But you could ask the question, would it be Robert Hellenius? I mean, he has just beaten Adam Kovnatsky twice. Unclear if PBC still have an option on him, but he is a guy that actually has a bit of value right now, obviously has something potentially Andy Ruiz Jr. could take from him, the WBA Gold Championship. Plus also, Robert Hellenius has an inside track towards the WBA mandatory shot. And I would just note, he is not the mandatory at the moment, despite the PBC broadcast declaring him so on the pay-per-view. Robert Hellenius is not the mandatory. The WBA has not confirmed that. So let's get that clear. But certainly you could see this sort of fight could be a WBA final eliminator. And I guess there are a couple of other outside names. You could kind of go, well... Johnny Rice, they have an option on him uh, after his win over Michael Polite Coffee. There's other guys within the stable. I mean, you could rematch Chris Ariola, Gerald War Washington at a push. But I guess one thing it's clear, it's not going to be Luis Ortiz. And Andy Ruiz Jr. had previously, and I guess famously said, he wanted a tune-up before he'd face Luis Ortiz. He had the tune-up with Chris Ariola. No Luis Ortiz fight. Seemingly Ortiz and Charles Martin are going to be fighting on the 1st of January 2022. So if it's not um, Ortiz, then I guess a duck is confirmed, at least where fans will be concerned with Andy Ruiz Jr. based off previous statements. But it'll be good to see Ruiz back in the ring, whoever it is. He looked a little shaky after a, more than a year out against Chris Ariola. He needs activity. He needs to stay in the ring and uh, dedicated, focused on his career, especially if he wants to become a, a cha heavyweight champion again. And that's only one or two fights sort of out of his reach but he's got to make those steps and uh, keep active. Anyway, moving on. So Tony Yoka apparently may be now fighting Carlos Takam, and this is according to Dan Raphael. So Takam has, is a new name that's sort of into the fray. So Tony Yoka, you can see here in this post, uh, so he's saying that he's fighting January 15. And this is uh, just a post from 12 hours ago at the time that I record, but uh, previously, a few days ago, and I had this in another video, he'd also said he would be fighting January 15 with the venue. So this whole thing with Carlos to come, this is uh, Dan Raphael saying per source, heavyweight Tony Yoka will return Jan 15 in Paris to face former world title challenger and French countryman Carlos to come in a fight that will be on ESPN plus in the US, a step up for Yoka to come always tough. I guess in some ways, I'm not sure if it's a, a step up, really. Is it just more of the sort of same? Because Carlos Takam, over 40 now, stopped by Joe Joyce in half a dozen rounds in his last fight out. Uh, hasn't looked as... He has been on the decline in recent years. And Tony Yoka, and I know some people don't like him, but he has actually fought pretty decent opposition in recent times. Christian Hammer, Peter Milas, decent names. Uh, those guys, if they fought Carlos Takam, would be very competitive fights. So I actually think this is more of the same from Tony Yoka that at the moment with the pandemic, uh, because remember, he signed in 2020 before the pandemic really took hold, a deal to be promoted by top rank. And Carlos Takam has a top rank tie and he is co-promoted by them also, along with Star Boxing. So no real promotional issues preventing this sort of fight. But previously it has been reported and said that these guys are close, are friends and probably would never fight each other. So it's a little surprising that this might get made. But at the end of the day, Carlos to come, coming towards the tail end of his career, it could be a decent sort of payday to sort of sail off into the sunset. And at least who knows, Carlos to come does bring it, does come to fight. 
and potentially he could end up uh, giving Tony Yoka a tough fight. We want to see these guys who've been, remembering these Rio guys have been pro for like five years now. They need to be having some of those tougher tests to get to that next step. So I think this is a fine fight to it sort of ticks those uh, that box. Moving on, you've got Huey Fury and Chris Ariola mentioned in the same sentence. So this is from boxer promoter Ben Shalom. So he is saying that they're eyeing a showdown with uh, Fury and Chris Ariola, and see, there's a boxing scene story, all that sort of stuff. But my question as I posed on Twitter is, is this actually going to happen? Because remembering Chris Ariola is a PBC fighter and I would say it's more likely they'll try to keep Chris Ariola in-house and after his performance against uh, Andy Ruiz Jr. knocked him down, had a few good moments and rocked uh, Ruiz a few times, it's probably going to guarantee him at least another payday. And you can sort of see there's sort of interest still in him. He's just faded and washed enough where he's still got credibility and he's put in some recent sort of good shifts. And remember that Adam Kovnatsky fight from a couple of years ago, you know, punch record, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it's a guy, especially for someone like Fury, who had been yo-yoing between absolute dross and then world level. So these sorts of fights with the likes of Ariola, he just fought Christian Hammer, for example, that that sort of, you know, top 30-ish sort of opponent that he can get a good test in. So, But I just don't expect it's going to get made. And just because I don't think PBC are done with him. I think this is sort of throwing out his name and remembering Eddie Hearn had thrown out Ariola's name before and a couple of times, and it's just never sort of panned out. I think if he's still in the PBC stable, that's where he's going to, st uh, to stay. An opponent for Dempsey McKean for his uh, first fight under his new matchroom deal has been confirmed. So he's on the Demetrius Andre card. This is Friday in the US. Um, I probably one of these things I probably would, would have got caught out. I just saw on a promo post. I was like, oh, that's right. It's on Friday US time. So that would be uh, Saturday for um, people who are in New Zealand, Australia, down under, all that sort of stuff. But um, McKean is going to be facing Don Hainsworth. So. It is what it is. It's a tune-up. Certainly not a very good fight. He will, um, you know, make short work of Hainsworth, I think. Um, I'll go into a little bit more depth uh, on the sort of matchup in another preview video. There's a German card this weekend, so I'll roll that in. There's also Nick Campbell is facing Danny Whitaker as well, so I'll sort of do that in a preview in uh, tomorrow's video, I think. Moving on, so Steve Robinson, the British prospect, has announced on social media, I will be back on the Sky Sports Boxing for Boxer December 11 in Cardiff on the Chris Eubank Jr. undercard. Thanks to Sky and Boxer for the opportunity and everyone who's on the journey with me. Moving on, so Charles Martin, who looks set to face Luis Ortiz New Year's Day. He has been sparring with uh, top-ranked prospect Jeremiah Milton. So Milton, a very popular sparring partner. And just moving on to just a couple of fights that are uh, sort of under the radar coming up in the next couple of days. So Sonny Conto, a top-ranked prospect who had a bit of buzz a couple of years ago, but he's only had, uh, what is it, three fights in the past, uh, or two fights in the past two years. This this will be his third against Joel Cordell. So this is going to be in Philadelphia. So he has sort of been beset by um, injury and inactivity in the past uh, two years. So good to see him back. So I did check on the top rank website. So Sonny Conto definitely is still a top rank fighter. This is probably a good opportunity to get him back in the ring and um, just bring him back slowly. So hopefully coming to a top rank card near you and me um, soon. Uh, but also um, on the schedule I saw, and this is uh, Rydell Booker and Ray Austin, and bearing in mind, I think Ray Austin turned pro um, 1999 or something like that, and you've got Rydell Booker who turned pro in something like 2001, this fight could have happened like 15 or 17 years ago and it wouldn't have been unusual, but these guys are pretty long in the tooth now. But also above that you can see uh, the German prospect Christian Thun, who is 6-0, he'll be facing Keenan Hickman. So Hickman's been uh, knocked out before by Kenzie Morrison and also Guido Vianello. So Thun should be able to sort of uh, handle him comfortably enough. And as you can see at the bottom, McKean facing Don Hainsworth. Hainsworth previously fought the likes of uh, Simon Keen, and he didn't clearly want to be in that fight. And also uh, Zhang Zhile about two or three years ago. Anyway, 
What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.